Hello everyone and welcome to our 5.3 through 5.7 notes on triangle congruence. And so earlier this unit we talked about proving triangles congruent to each other, which means that we want to say that all of their parts are going to be congruent. So all of the sides were congruent to each other. We had three different sets of sides that were congruent and you had to prove three different sets of angles were congruent. And if that was the case, then we could say that the triangles were the same. We could say that the triangles were congruent to each other. So we had to have uh, six total things, three sets of sides, and three sets of angles congruent. What we're going to do today is teach you the shortcuts to proving triangles congruent, which truly just saves you time. And so before we do that, before we get to those shortcuts, we have to look at a little bit of vocabulary. The first vocabulary word is included angle. All of us know in life what it means to be included with our friends, and unfortunately, most of us know what it feels like to be excluded as well. So an included angle is when the angle is directly between or touching two indicated sides. So if we have a side marked, and we have a side marked, if that angle is touching both of those sides, we're gonna call that included because that is included in their conversation. Whereas an included side looks a little bit different. The included side is when the side is between or touching both indicated angles. So here's how that might appear in a triangle. If you have an angle here and an angle here, this side is included or touching both of these angles that are surrounding it. So that would be part of that conversation. So included means to be in between. Included is going to be when it falls in between. If it's not included, that means it's falling on the outside. So the first set of directions just says to identify what information is given or what is marked on the picture. When we've talked about this before, we've talked about saying that the marking has to be there. It's kind of like a tattoo appearing. A marking has to be indicated, we cannot just assume. So it says identify what information is given, then whether your angle or side is included or not included. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna count what is marked. So in this one specific triangle, we have a side marked and we have another side marked. So that is a total of two sides, two sides marked. The third side is not marked. It does not have a congruence marking in other words. And then it says to count the number of angles. So I'm gonna count the angles. There is only one angle marked, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do every single time is just to count, simply give a count value. What we're gonna do next is we are going to circle the amount that only appears once. So our angles only appear once. What we wanna do now is it says to tell whether that angle is included with the sides or excluded. So included means it's touching both. So is this one angle touching both of these sides? And it is, it's touching this side right here and it's touching this side right here. So this is going to be included, this is included. Since it is included, whenever we write that information, we are given a side that is then touching an angle that is then touching a side. Because it's included, it is going to fall in between the two S's. If it's excluded, you're gonna write it last. So if it was excluded, we would have written SSA, but since it's included, it's sandwiched in between, you're going to write SAS. That was a side touching an angle touching a side on that triangle. All right, so let's do this next one. When I count my number of sides, I only have one side marked in this diagram. In this, one, in this one triangle, I only have one side marked. So I have one, just one there. How many angles do I have marked? I have two angles marked, one, two. So now we're gonna circle the one that has one, which is the side. I have two angles and a side. I just have to figure out how to write it. We have to ask ourselves, is this side included, which means touching both of the other angles, which it is not. It is touching this one angle, but it is not touching the other one. So we're gonna say that this is non-included. This is not included. In other words, when I write my statement about what is given, this is an angle touching an angle. There's two of those. And the side is excluded, meaning it's off to the side by itself. It is not sandwiched in between both of these angles. It would have to be touching both of these angles to be included. So I'm gonna list this as angle, angle, side. So we're just listing the information that appears in the diagram. This is the angle that is then touching another angle before it touches that third side that is marked. Okay, all right, let's do this again. So I've got two angles in this diagram, two angles. 
and I have only one side marked, one side of this triangle marked. Again, we're going to circle the one that only has one. We know that there's going to be two angles and a side listed in the information given. We just have to figure out, is this sandwiched between it, or does it come last? This one side is touching this angle, this blue one here, and it's touching this blue angle here. So this is going to be included. It is a part of the conversation between the two angles. So when I list it, instead of angle, angle, side, with a side sitting off to the, the right, I'm going to list it as angle, side, angle. This is angle, side, angle, where that side is sitting in between the two angles that are listed. So angle, side, angle. This shows that the side is sandwiched in between these two angles. This is going to be very, this is a very important skill in order to get to these shortcuts. All right. On this problem, I have two sides. I have two total sides. And then I only have one angle that has a marking on it. Now, I know that I have three sides in the diagram total, but only two of them have markings. I know that I have three angles total, but only one of them has a marking. So we circle the one that has one, and we ask ourselves, is that included or excluded from the sides? This is going to be a non-included angle. This is excluded. It's excluded because it is touching this side length on the bottom, but it is not touching the other side length at all. So when I write that as a statement of what is given, I would write the two S's with the A written last because it is not included in this between the two sides. All right, you can try a few of these on your own if you would like. This is a new one that we have not seen yet. This one, all three sides are marked and zero angles are marked. When that happens, we know immediately, I don't have to think about what's included and what's excluded. That is just three sides directly that I get to mark. So there are three sides marked in that diagram with zero angles marked. All right, let's do that again. So when we get to this next one, we have one side marked. There is a count of one side marked with two different angles marked. So count those, that is two total. So we always circle the one that has one. You know that there's going to be two A's and an S. We just have to figure out if the side is included or not included. That side is only touching one of our angles. And so since it's only touching one of our angles, we're going to call that non-included. Since it's non-included, what I'm going to do is when I list it, I'm going to put it last. I have to list that last because it is not in between those two angles. It's happening afterwards. So we would call that angle, angle, side. Okay, let's keep going. We have um, two angles in this one two angles with one side marked, so it's very similar to what we just did. However, on this one, the side is going to be sandwiched in between. So that is included. When I mark that, that is going to be included. Since it's included in that conversation, we would write angle and then side and then angle. So this is where the angle, the angles on the outside, the side is happening in the middle. It's touching both of these angles and so it's included in that. So we would list that in the middle instead of last. So every time you're gonna list the one with either in the middle or last. If it's included, you list it in the middle. If it's not included, you list it last. All right, let's keep going. When I get to this problem, I have one angle, one angle only, but I do have two sides marked. I have this one with a congruence mark, I have this one with a congruence mark. So I have two sides and one angle. So I'm gonna circle the one with one, and we ask ourselves, is that included in between the sides or non-included? It is non-included because it's only touching one of the sides, and so I'm going to list it last. I list the two sides first. This angle is non-included. It's not included in the conversation, so it's happening third. Okay. All right. We have this again. One angle total. Only one angle here. But I have two sides marked. Two sides have markings on them. We just have to, have to ask ourselves after we circle the one with one, is that angle included in the two sides or non-included? It's happening in the middle. It's happening in, um, in the sandwich between both of those sides. It's touching both sides. So that is going to be included. Since it's included, we're going to write the two sides, the S and the S, with the A in between. The A is going to be included in between. So this will be S-A-S, -S, side, angle, side. Okay. This next one, we've got two sides, it looks like, and one angle. You can go slow on this if you need to. There's our one angle. There are our two sides. So we circle the one with one. It appears that that angle, 
that one angle is going to be non-included. Why is it non-included? Because it's only touching one of the sides. It's not sandwiched in the middle or in between those sides. So when I list my total of two S's and one A, instead of going S-A-S, -S, I'm gonna list S-S-A with the A non-included, meaning it's on the outside of the conversation. It's happening last. All right, I have zero sides marked on this picture, but I do have three angles marked. Three angles marked. So I don't have to think about the order. I'm just gonna write that. That is three angles total. There are no S's on that one. On this one, we have two angles total marked. Two angles are marked. One side is marked in this diagram. We just have to ask ourselves, is that side included? Is that an included side or a non-included side? So now I'm gonna have two A's and one S. We just have to figure out, does it come in the middle or does it come last? So to see if it's included, we ask ourselves, is it touching both angles when I highlight it or is it only touching one? That side is only touching one angle. And so since it's only touching one angle, that is going to be a non-included side. Since it's not included, we're going to write angle, angle, side. That S is listed last because it's not included in between the angles. Like there would need to be a marking here for that to be angle, side, angle. So that's gonna be angle, angle, side. All of this practice, it seems long and it seems very tedious, but this practice actually helps us a lot when it comes to using our shortcuts. So we'll come back to that in a second. All right, besides angles and sides that are pre-marked, everything in the top section was pre-marked, the following items can also be marked congruent. So we've talked about this a little bit so far. If two triangles are overlapping at a side length, it can also be marked. A lot of times you'll see them where they, if we disconnected those, those would line up exactly if I put them back together. They can also be overlapped like this, where they're sitting on top of each other. Um, triangle A, B, C. Triangle ABC is overlapping this other triangle, triangle BDC, and they are overlapping at the yellow part. And so we can say that triangle um, RF, that piece, is going to be congruent to triangle uh, segment RF. And on this one, segment BC would be the same in both triangles. That segment would be present in both triangles. So those have common sides. All right. You have also seen where if two triangles are touching at a point like this, um, we can create some vertical angles if they exist around those. So I can say that angle NOP is going to be congruent to angle TOS. I know that because those are vertical angles, so I can always add that in a diagram like we did last week. The only other good thing to look out for is if you ever see parallel markings. Anytime you see parallel lines, we can also add interior angles, alternate interior angles. So the way that you mark those is you go from the parallel line to the transversal. So always start at the parallel line, which is where your triangle's at, and go to the transversal. Start at the parallel line and go to the transversal. So we can say that angle MWR is going to be congruent to angle KW, KRW because those are alternate interior. I see those same markings up here in this next shape. And so those are my parallel lines. And so here is my transversal. Anytime we mark alternate interior angles, we start at the parallel marking, which is where the triangles are, and we go to the transversal. So we go to the transversal. So that angle would be congruent to this angle. You would say angle KJL is congruent to angle MLJ. Those are our alternate interior angles that must be congruent. We only can do that set because we do not know that the other lines are parallel. If we wanted to add more, we'd have to know that these lines are parallel as well, which we do not. We only have triangles on one set. Must have the parallel lines pre-marked. I have a note for you on that. The only other thing that you might see is when you have a triangle overlapping another triangle, but instead of overlapping at a side, these actually overlap at an angle. So angle C would be present in both of these shapes. It is present in the triangle on the right and it's present in the triangle on the left. And so you might overlap at an angle. So anytime you see this information, if it's not already marked, you can add that, but that is the only kind of information that you can add. All right, so let's just see, it says practice. And we're gonna come back to this page. We're gonna see what is marked and then what I could possibly add. So what is currently marked? I have 20 millimeters on this one side. 
I also have 20 millimeters on this other side. So I'm gonna add a congruence mark in there. Because those have the same measure, those angles, or those sides must be congruent. Then I have pre-marked in this picture. These two little um, markings mean that these angles are congruent. Angle WZX is congruent to angle YZX. The only other thing that I can add, since these are overlapping in the middle at a side, I get to say that XZ is also going to be congruent to XZ. So I get to add those markings in the middle. So I got to add this piece of information. Okay. So if I were to label that as of now, that isn't included because it's in the middle. That would be side, angle, side. The angle is included in the middle. Okay. All right. These, we have uh, three inches and we have three inches, so I get to add congruence marks on those. Those sides must be congruent if they have the same measure. I have an angle B that is marked the same as this angle C down here, so those are congruent already. That was given in the picture. But these are overlapping as well at a side in the middle. That side is present in both triangles, so I would get to add that BC is congruent to BC that is present in both triangles. So if I were to mark what is there, we have a side and then an angle and then a side where the angle is included because it's happening in the middle of those two sides. It's sandwiched in between. Okay? Now, the first thing I see when I come over here is these little markings. These little markings mean that these lines are parallel. So we're going to come back to that in a second, but we, since those both say five, we can also say that these are congruent. So I'm going to add congruence marks. But we also see those little triangles. It means that these lines must be parallel. If those lines are parallel, remember from earlier, anytime you see parallel lines this unit, that's probably going to indicate that you can add alternate interior angles. So we mark from the parallel line to the transversal, from the parallel line to the transversal. So we actually get to add that those angles are congruent to each other because of the alternate interior angles theorem. The lines are parallel, so those must be congruent. We are also given that this angle W is congruent to angle Y. So we, had, we got to add these angles. So this angle um, in yellow is congruent to this angle in yellow. These overlap at this side, WZ. So WZ is also going to be congruent to itself because it's present in both triangles. The only other thing we got to add that was not already there was that angle w, uh, Z, WZX is going to be congruent to YX. Y, X, Z, because of those were alternate interior angles. Alternate interior. So that would be an angle touching an angle, or touching a side touching an angle. You could also do angle, angle, side there. Okay. All right. So we're just adding whatever we can to the picture. These are both two, so I can put congruence marks there. We already know that angle R is congruent to angle V. The only other thing that I can add in this diagram is these overlap at point T, and these vertical angles are created. So we got to add that information to this picture. So as of now, that side is sandwiched in between those two angles, so I would name that angle side angle. All right, so let's keep going. We have a set of parallel lines. Anytime I have that set of parallel lines, immediately I know that we have some alternate interior angles that exist in these triangles. So remember whenever I do that, what I do is I connect the parallel line to the transversal and the parallel line to the transversal. So those alternate interior angles are congruent. I can say that these are alternate interior angles, so they must be congruent in those parallel lines. We also know that since this is six meters, I can mark it the same as this piece of the triangle, which is also six meters. And then the only other thing that we can mark is that these triangles overlap at side MP. If I broke those apart, they would both have that same side length. I could glue them right back together where I broke them apart at side MP. Okay. All right, so that would be a side and a side, but the angle has to be listed last because it is not included in between those two sides. It is not happening in between those two sides. All right, here all I have is three angles. I have three angles. I have no sides marked at all, and there's no way to mark additional sides. So now that we have practiced, practiced all of this, I know that this is a lot of work, but this pre-work is really going to help you once we get to our shortcuts. So our shortcuts take, instead of having to choose and pick all three pairs of sides and checking that they're all congruent, and checking all three pairs of angle and to check that they're all congruent, the shortcuts allow you to check less items. 
And so we have five shortcuts, five shortcuts to prove triangles are congruent. So ways to prove triangles are congruent without having to check all three sides and all three angles. So it takes your workload and it cuts it in half. So there are five shortcuts that work. There are a few combinations that are not gonna be shortcuts. So our only combinations are side, side, side. That is where you have three pairs of congruent sides. One, two, three. So if those same markings are in both, then you could say that the triangles are congruent without knowing anything about their angles. So if I didn't know anything about all three of these angles, you would immediately know that they have to be the same because of the side, side, side shortcut. The next one is side, angle, side, where the angle is sandwiched in between or included in between those two sides. So two sides would be marked as congruent, and then the angle included in between those two sides or, ha or touching both of those two sides would have to be um, congruent. If that happens without knowing anything about that third side or about those other two angles, immediately I know that those triangles must be congruent. So those are going to be congruent to each other using that shortcut. These triangles are now going to be congruent to each other as well, side, angle, side. Okay. The reverse of that, of side, angle, side, is angle, side, angle, where instead of a side being included, or an angle being included in between two sides, now a side is included in between two angles. If you have two angles marked on your picture that are congruent to each other, but you also know that the side between them is congruent, the side included in between them is congruent, then you get to use the shortcut angle, side, angle to prove these triangles congruent. This one's one of the easiest to see in my opinion because you can tell it looks like a sandwich. That side is sandwiched in between these two angles. So I would immediately be able to say that these triangles are congruent using the angle, side, angle shortcut. I don't have to know anything about the third angle and I don't have to know anything about the other two sides. Okay. Our next one is angle, angle, side where that side is non-included. It's not sitting in between the two. It says two angles and a side opposite them are congruent. So here's how it might appear in a diagram. Two angles and a side that's off to the side is not included. So two angles and a side that's off to the side. They'd have to have the same markings, but this side is only touching one of the angles. It's not touching both of the angles. Okay. The last one we're gonna learn about is called hypotenuse leg. Of course, we're only gonna have a hypotenuse leg in right triangles, so this can only be used in right triangles, where the hypotenuse and any leg of a right triangle are congruent. So the first thing you check for is, is it a right triangle, which this one is. And so if you have a hypotenuse that is congruent to a hypotenuse, the, angle, the side across from the right angle, and you have a leg of that triangle that is congruent to another leg of the other triangle. That would allow you to use the HL theorem, where you have a hypotenuse and a leg congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg. Notice that if we did this, if we said if that was a side, a side, or an angle, that would be listed as side, side, angle, where the angle is third. If you reverse that, that would spell a bad word. That is not one of our theorems. SSA is not one of our theorems, nor is ASS. So anytime that I find that it looks like an angle touching a side, touching a side, I always check to see if it's a right triangle to see if I could use HL. Okay. All right. These are different reasons. You can read through this. We'll come back to these a little bit later. This is just a reference sheet that will be used this um, unit. Reasons for congruent side, it might be given. They might tell you that something is a midpoint, or you might have the reflexive property where they overlap. Reason for congruent angles, it might be given. You might add vertical angles. If you have parallel lines, you could add alternate interior angles or corresponding angles. We'll come back to that example later. Or they might tell you that something gets bisected, which is where you can create, because bisect means to cut an angle in half. The only other thing I'm gonna preview you to, and we'll come back to this on Friday, is CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Meaning if I tell you that two triangles are congruent, then all of their angles are going to be congruent to each other and all of their sides are going to be congruent to each other. So I'd be able to say that angle A is sitting in the same spot as angle D. Those are gonna be congruent. Angle B is gonna be sitting in the same spot as the second one, angle E. And then angle C is going to be congruent to angle F. This is like, kind of like what y'all did the other day with the quiz. We know that side um, AB is going to be congruent to second, third, DE. We know that side, so one, two, one, two, side BC is going to be congruent to side EF. 
And then last but not least, the outside piece, AC, would then have to be congruent to DF. So if the, if the triangles are congruent, then all of the sides match up and all of the angles match up. And we'll come back to that idea on Friday.